I'm Sarah and I'm 29. Hi, I'm Kerry. I'm 37. I'm a keen runner. Um, I've run, I think, 41 marathons. This year I'm going to be running the London Marathon. Um, I'm going to try and squeeze under 3 hours 45. I like to try and do it in under 3 hours 40, which is quite ambitious, but hopefully I can do it. First step for Sarah and Kerry will be at Portsmouth University Physiology and Sports Research Centre. The training research is an eight week programme. It's important before starting high level endurance training though to get specific athlete data and that's the best way to help them to achieve their goals. The aim of the study is to determine the impact of replacing one weekly running session with a swimming session and its impact on running performance. Their coach is Annie and she will guide them through to the London Marathon. That's right. Hi. Welcome to Portsmouth University oh, Research Centre. Great. Really good to see you. Just yeah, waiting for too. Kerry. Oh. Hi, Kerry. Hi. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Annie is a former triathlon champion and expert coach with uh, a tailor-made program ready to go for Sarah and Kerry that includes swimming. I'm really excited to be part of this project and really looking forward to working with Kerry and Sarah and seeing them through to the London Marathon and hoping to help them achieve their goals. Hi Kerry. Dr. Mitch Lomax from the Department Hi, Sarah, of Sport Mitch. and Exercise Science, the research program uh, with uh, Coach Annie will help write that specific training schedule. The research program will be all important in terms of the data for that. I guess it would be interesting to see kind of how well I did to kind of know maybe what I'm capable of and how fit I am because I do run quite a lot but I don't know kind of where I sit in terms of that so. I started running after uni because I used to play water polo at uni. But more recently, there's been a big shift in that for me. And now I run because it makes me feel really good about myself. And um, if I'm having a bad day, going for a run really, really helps. And yeah, if, you know, if I'm stressed about something or worried about something, it's just a really good way for me to kind of like clear my head. So I probably run about five times a week, I'd say. Um, and I say maybe a couple of those might be on my own, sort of in the morning before work or something. But most of them are with, like, I run with other groups in London as well. It will be quite cool to have swimming come back into my training programme again and kind of see how that will fit. Back to Portsmouth University where Sarah and Kerry are ready to start the testing. Many endurance sports champions uh, always do this in terms of evaluating their physical fitness. The test takes around 90 minutes to perform and it includes things like flexibility, grip strength, back strength, lung function and VO2 max. And then all the way in. Excellent, well done, good stuff, that's it. Have a rest. Yeah. <laughs> Testing ends with the VO2 max. It's a measure of the maximum volume of oxygen that an athlete can use. As you increase your effort with exercise, the amount of oxygen required to produce energy increases. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but um, you feel a bit like Hannibal Lecter or Bane from Batman running in front of a treadmill, but um, yeah, it's worth it in the end. started running about 14 years ago, um, I think just to improve my fitness after university. I needed something in my life that I could do regularly 
that didn't cost a lot of money, um, that anybody can do. I run about three or four times a week at the moment. There was a time when, uh, you know, I was getting a little bit obsessed with it and I would run five times, six times. I think at my peak I was doing about eight sessions a week, but it's, it's you know, that's far too much. And as I've got older, I've discovered that it's impossible to keep up. My swimming at the moment isn't great, I've got to be honest. Um, I don't really uh, like to admit to uh, not being good at stuff, but I have to say, if anybody saw me in the pool now, it would be not a comical sight, but it would be obvious that I'm not that proficient at it. In three, two, one, and away you go again. Good. Good, you're doing well. This is Apollo Control at 102 hours into the Good flight stuff. of Apollo 11. OK, you've got 30 seconds left in this Going stage, Jerry. 30 seconds. Control. Good stuff. A few moments ago, flight It'd start off like the treadmill will be quite slow, kind of a really easy pace, and then after three minutes running at that pace, you'd have to straddle the treadmill and jump off, and then um, Mitch would take some blood. Good, then hold that there for me. 12 minutes now. Until... OK, and then just before we go up again... And they ask uh, how out of breath you are, how much effort you thought you were making from a, a chart which they hold up in front of you. So go. your efforts right in the last go. stage. Go. Go. 12, go. fabulous, go. and you're breathing go. on the go. last go. Eight. Go. Uh, and then they put the treadmill speed up by two kilometres an hour and then you jump back on and do another three minutes and you keep repeating that until you're effectively sprinting and you can't go any further and you have to uh, jump off and stop. That's good, Kerry. Keep pushing. You're doing really, really well. Keep holding on for as long as you can. Good stuff. That's good. You've just got a minute left at this stage, so keep going for as long as you can. That's really good. Have, like, running with a mask on and, like, having someone, like, take your blood all the time and... Yeah, it's really strange. Keep pushing, okay, keep pushing. Go. Excellent. Right keep moving, go. you're doing well. Go. Nearly done, go. you're doing well. You've got 30 go. seconds left at this stage. Go. That's it. Go. Really, really go. good, Sarah. Keep go. hanging on here. Go. Keep going, go. you're doing well. Go. Just keep go. going, go. and you're going to straddle go. in five, four, go. three, go. two, go. one, go. and straddle. Go. Well done, that's really good. Go. Excellent stuff, Kerry. Well done. Brilliant. So that's the, the testing done. So what I'll do, as with Kerry, I'll transfer your data over to Annie. Okay. Um, and best of luck with the marathon. Thank you. OK, Mitch, so we've done the test. We have, we have. Let's see the results. Data's in. OK, so who do you want to start with first? Let's start with Kerry. What particularly do you want to know? Interested in the VO2 max. Yep, so that's our, that's our VO2 max. So Kerry's VO2 max, as expected, is much higher than we would predict based on just his age, his sex and his height. So that's not surprising given that, that he's an athlete. So yeah, that's a, that's a good VO2 max to start with. Let's take a look at Sarah's. Similar type of data, if you like, for Sarah. So everything's looking good. Again, Sarah's VO2 max, so her maximal oxygen um, consumption is greater than you'd expect based, for, uh, based on her age, her sex and, and her height. So you'd expect that for someone who's training. So we're dealing with two pretty decent runners here. I, I would say so, yes. I would say so. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you for coming in. Now time for Coach Annie to design Sarah and Kerry's marathon-specific training programmes to include the swimming. Follow their progress on the next episode on April the 9th.